Coming up, let us go 100% propel ahead and lift the lid on the secret life of knock sensors and detonation management generally in engines, all inspired by recent questions from you. I'm John Cadogan from autoexpert.com.au, the place where new car buyers save thousands off their next new cars. Hit me up on the website for that. Yesterday's report on octane rating raised quite a few questions, and some of them even had merit, amazingly enough. Let's head those off right now. So, if knock is when fuel ignites before the spark plug fires, how does the knock sensor telling the ECU to retard ignition timing help? Well, obviously, inconveniently, you cannot go back in time and prevent knock that has already occurred, maybe in the future, who knows. Currently, all one can do is prevent knock in the future using the past as a predictor. So let's think about how engines actually operate. Knock, detonation, pinging, pinking, whatever you want to call it, is what happens when a pocket of fuel-air mixture in the cylinder starts to burn spontaneously in response to excessive heat and pressure. And this generally happens too early in the process, before the spark plug fires, and it upsets the precise choreography of the engine's combustion dynamics by producing a shock wave. Thousands of severe knock events at big throttle inputs and high revolutions will destroy an engine over time, catastrophically. So obviously this is a thing that needs to be managed, which is why modern engines have knock sensors and a whole control system built in around them. So basically a knock sensor is a glorified microphone that listens for unique sounds that knock make, okay? A little piezoelectric doohickey, a listening device, and when it detects that unique knock sound, if it's severe enough, the computer retards the spark timing and the knock goes away. So you've got cause effect cure, right? Unless you're using the wrong fuel, of course, this will not work and we'll get to that. You have to think about the blistering speed of engine operation, right? Just 3,000 RPM, which is pretty mundane, is 50 revolutions per second. That's 25 firing events per second per cylinder. It's kind of like the movies when you think about it. You know, every action sequence plays out seamlessly when you're sitting there watching the big screen. But it's actually just a collection of 24 still images bombarding you sequentially for every second of that movie that you watch. And there can be preposterous action on screen, right? Big changes between the start of a scene and the finish. But in reality, the difference between each frame in a particular shot is relatively minor and also somewhat predictable. Engines operate kind of like that, you know. The next firing stroke is going to be somewhat similar to the previous one and therefore somewhat predictable. A firing stroke right now is going to be similar dynamically to the next one. So if a cylinder knocks right now, that's a good predictor that if something's not changed, it's going to knock again next time. Which kind of answers Chris's question, I think. If detected knock gets over a pre-programmed threshold, the computer intervenes by retarding the timing, and this takes knock off the table, if possible, if you're using the right fuel. The final thing here that is kind of paradoxical about engines is that engines are most powerful and most efficient, which are flip sides of the same coin, when they are operating at the maximum possible ignition advance. And that's just before knock occurs. And this is why ignition advance control algorithms and the knock sensors on sentry duty for the life of the engine are designed to advance the timing right up to the point of incipient knock and then they back off a bit, repeat, at high speed for the whole time the engine operates. So if knock is a line in the sand, okay, the engine walks up to it and just puts its toes over the edge and then takes a small step back 50 times a second. 
which is just one of the benefits of computer-controlled engine management systems. I thought engines had knock sensors that backed off timing when knock was detected, which means you can run any engine on any octane petrol without damaging it. Tell me more, John, what crucial piece of information am I missing? Okay, so the missing information here for Mr. Banger is that if you put, say, 91 regular unleaded in a car that demands 98, like a BMW M2, here is what's gonna happen. And newsflash, you should never do this. Say you pull out to overtake a truck, okay? You're doing 100 k's an hour, you're going uphill, it's a steep hill, it's kind of hot outside, high ambient air temperature. You knock it back a couple of gears and you floor it and you pull 6,000 RPM at wide open throttle and you scream past, yes! Both turbos are certainly belting the air in in these conditions and the ambient temperatures are putting the bite on intercooler efficiency and there's a lot of effective compression in the engine and there's a lot of load to work against too, against gravity, against aerodynamic drag and against the vehicle's own inertia because you're accelerating. No amount of ignition retardation can overcome the fact that the compression and heat in the cylinder like that is sufficient to cause 91 to detonate early. Retarding the ignition here, okay, it's a bit like putting a band-aid on a friggin' gunshot wound. And there is, of course, a somewhat predictable result. Your beautiful work of art M Division 3-litre twin-turbo engine is going to make a loud noise And it's going to compose a letter to the UNHCR alleging aggravated abuse by you. And frankly, you should avoid a trial in this situation and just plead guilty because you did it and you got caught red-handed. The first thing the dealer principal is going to do after you darken his doorstep in this unhappy state is phone his travel agent and book the family first class for a fortnight in the presidential suite of the Grand Isle Resort and Spa in the Bahamas which clearly you are about to fund because on fuel you are a cheapskate or a moron or both. Can you imagine the cost of a replacement BMW M2 engine? I, I mean, I certainly can. You'd need to stand next to the defibrillator just to, just to receive the damn quote and remain compliant with the service department's OH&S practices, right? So no, a knock sensor and ignition retardation is simply insufficient to mitigate low octane fuel going into a car designed for high octane under heavy loads, big throttle inputs and high RPMs. Not doing shit till you triple dog dare me. Excellent point, Krieg and Thank you so much for raising it. Although technically you did comment without being triple dog dared, so <laughs> there's your argument. I did double dog dare you to like, comment and subscribe at the end of yesterday's video, but I now realise, thanks to Krieg, that this was half-hearted and insufficient by way of inducement to interact on the channel. And I'm very sorry. Can I say? Therefore, at this point, I take this remedial opportunity to triple dog dare you to, as Krieg put it, do shit. Which many of the comments are, now that I think about it. But not all. I'm looking forward to seeing a lift in the fine doing of shit, thanks to the Krieg Mac triple dog dare do shit YouTube hack. Yes. Do it now. And thank you very much for watching. <laughs>